So retiming titles aren't very difficult. You don't need to go into Fusion. I've had a ton of emails asking me this over the years. Uh, how do you retime something? And they showed me videos and they're going and using keyframe stretchers and doing all sorts of things. You really don't need to do that. Uh, there is a use case for that way of doing things, but you really don't need to do that if you're using a modern version of DaVinci Resolve. Before I actually explain this, well, if you're interested in knowing specifically that and you don't care about hearing how we got to this point, uh, there's a timestamp in the uh, play bar or timeline bar, whatever the red bar will take you right to there. But for everyone else that's interested in knowing uh, how we got there and why this is the way it is if you're coming from like an Adobe product or something like that. So Adobe for the most part is all actually time based, time code based, right? If you make something that is one minute long in a 30, in a 30 frames per second timeline and you take it to 24 frames or 60 frames, it's just going to change the amount of frames it takes for a set of keyframes to go from one point to the other. Uh, with a lot of other composite tools in the industry, they're all frame-based, right? So people will work on specific frames for a particular sequence that they have to work on, and it might be 18 frames, right? So they have to do 18 frames instead of having this weird time code thing where that things could get, you know, kind of, uh, in between frames and then you have subframes and stuff like that. So instead of doing that, they just work on specific frames and they have a specific number of frames. And Fusion is, is frame based, right? So uh, I believe my first thing actually here, this was one of my first videos that I ever made for uh, introducing the idea of templates, right? And this was in April of 2018. So we're at a about a three year mark here and DaVinci Resolve has changed dramatically when it comes to making different titles and transition. This has been pretty interesting. Everything started out as just fusion templates. And so if you wanted to do a title, you had to go through the fusion page and then they went to actually implementing the ability to put them onto the edit page within the template area. And that was a thing that you could do, but there was still no dynamic way to make titles. And then I found a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, they were, it was very complicated in how you had to do it. It was just like some math and then you had to use very weird parameters to figure out what the timeline length is. And I ended up making this title pack, which was the first dynamic one that I know of. Um, and that was just, it, it works, uh, but it was just very cumbersome to, you know, continuously keep adding those uh, those kind of features to a title. And then uh, I decided that I was going to just make different versions for the common used uh, frame rate. So I always made a 24 frames per second, a 30 frames per second and a 60 frames per second. And that was pretty much just the same animation, but with the timing of the keyframes slightly different. Um, so that was a thing. At the end of 16 going into 17, then they added in this whole new set of tools that allows you to make dynamic keyframes, which is really cool. And I'm still learning and trying to come up with different clever ideas on how to create those. But for now, I guess we should just jump into how to take any title and have it work with your project and be able to just use the tools that are on the edit page to kind of make your life a little easier with being able to stretch and uh, pull together a lot of the titles that currently exist throughout the web. So without further ado, explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. Let's actually just jump into using one of these that are the static. So this is stating that um, this is going to be 150 frames. So if you're using a 30 frames per second timeline, it's going to be five seconds. So if you were to use this in a 60 frames per second, you're going to cut this down. So this trend, the, this uh, title is only going to be two and a half seconds long. So we would want it to be longer, right? Or maybe you want it to be 20 seconds on a 30 frames per second timeline. So how do we do that? So let's jump over. I'm actually going to just in here put in uh, F1 because that's the one that we were looking at. So this is a this uh, 
is for a 30 frames per second. I'm currently at 24. Or actually, you know what? Let's back this up a little bit and let me show you how this will look um, if we go to, let's go 60 frames per second, sure. And then we'll add this on. And what you'll see is this animation halfway through here, it, it would be gone. Here, let me actually put a generator behind here so we can actually see this a little easier. Okay, so like I was saying, this is gonna be two and a half seconds. So if we get to two and a half seconds, we can see like right there, it's disappearing. That's because we're currently on a 60 frames per second timeline. So in this case, uh, I would do something a little bit different. Pretty much what I would do is I would take it to whatever that um, area would be. So that would be like right here is going to be the end of that whole uh, title. I would just cut that off. So this is the only area that we're working with. So now we're into the retiming of things. And how I would do that is I would right click. We're going to go into compound clip. This is going to turn this into a compound clip taken onto another timeline. But now we can uh, edit this as if it's a video. And if you know anything, if you've seen previous videos where I talk about uh, changing clip speed, that's what we're going to be doing here. So just going to right click in here. We're going to go to retime control. It brings up this retime control and now I can just drag this all the way out and now I have the title over the whole line. So that's the easiest way that you can do this. Um, but typically what people are wanting to do is they want to change either you want to speed up this uh, piece that's coming in, you want to speed up this piece that's going out or you want to make this middle where it's just static and it's showing whatever the information that's on the title uh, a bit longer. So to do that we're going to just use the same tools I'll just show you on this timeline here so we'll just bring it right to right about where the animation stops I'm just going to click this button right here and I'm going to add a speed point and then come out a little bit further right before the animation out or is it uh, it's, it's pretty far so I'm just going to click and click that again so now I have my little point so if I move this one it's going to stretch all of this if I move this one here this is going to stretch all of here and if I grab here it's going to stretch this little end port so all I would have to do is make this a little bigger and I'm going to just stretch this way out so now we have a 14 second um, we have a 14 second title and throughout that whole title or throughout that whole title it's all going to be static obviously here and then here at the end it will then go away right so bring that out a little bit there we go it goes away right so that's pretty much uh the easiest way to do that right so let's actually go back to a 30 frames per second timeline where this is full length and we're not actually just cutting it up and i'll show you, i have to show you one other thing um so i'll add this back on again so this is over this whole length right um and we're going to turn this into a compound clip so right now we have it's five seconds and that's the whole length of this and turning it into a compound clip we can do the same exact thing again i'm just going to do this really quickly to just show you this but there's one other aspect that you might not have thought about yet so now we have the whole uh animation and it's significantly longer right and so now it's 10 seconds you can make this as long as you want and you can use these little portions to make you know the animation on speed up by dragging it back and now this portion over here if i zoom in is going 200 speed right so that's going on faster but there are a couple of things so we have a drastic difference here it goes from 219 to 25 maybe we want to add in an ease the cool thing about that is we can come into retime curves hit the little drop down and we will go over to retime speed and turn off retime frame and now we have that here we just have to click on it to make it uh, uh, active and then we can click on our keyframe there and we can click this little button and it'll add in easing and we'll get little handles that we can now stretch it out and change the easing for that. So that's pretty much how we would do that. But there's one other thing here that you might not have thought about. If we click on here, we don't have any controls to edit the title, right? So there's no controls here to edit the title. So how do we do that? Uh, we're going to close the effects and I'll close this for now. I'm gonna click this little button here and we're gonna then click this button here. And this is going to allow us to open up multiple timelines. And once we can open up multiple timelines, we can open up this particular compound clip in a timeline of its own. So we'll go into open in timeline. 
And now we'll open up the compound clip and then here is our uh, title. So we can come in here and let's just make this a one quick, right? And we'll come back over to our timeline and we can see that it automatically updated there. So that's how we would then go in and change something if we needed the title to look a little bit different. What I typically recommend people to do is uh, when you go and you grab your title and you drop it on, get all of the stuff that you want edit it, edit first, right? So maybe I want to change this. So uh, one of my favorite teams, if you follow F1, you'll know exactly uh, who that is. But uh, if we right click, once we have it all edited, it'll keep whatever we have uh, set, right? It'll keep whatever we have set. There was actually one other thing there I wanna show you quickly here. So when I drop this on, um, if you have uh, caching on, it'll automatically pop up this bar and with caching, it'll first turn red and then it'll turn blue. When it turns blue, uh, that means that it's cached, right? It's into, it turns it into like a video file so then your computer doesn't have to uh, crunch the, all the numbers and actually figure out what that animation is, right? So then it plays back really smooth. One thing that to know is once you turn this into a compound clip, it's going to have to redo that whole process again. Now you won't see the bar here, but if I go over into uh, open in timeline, we will now see it in here. And so that would have to uh, update so that on the timeline, it will then be able to play back at normal speed. So that's just one thing to know if you're using uh, a title that is pretty complicated in its structure and it has a lot of fancy things going on. Um, this would have to uh, recache to get a good playback here because all, all this is doing is it's just referring to this compound clip and whatever's inside of it. So uh, once this cached, then over here, it would then play back at normal speed. When you're changing the timing, that wouldn't be affected by the caching or it wouldn't uh, have you recache. So that's pretty much it. It's not super difficult. Uh, there's one other thing that I guess I could show you now that I'm thinking about it. If I go in and let's pull one of these big titles. So like this one has a lot of text on it. Maybe you want this portion to be on for a long period of time, but you're working with one of the newer titles that you can grab the end of it and make it significantly longer, right? So we can make this significantly longer, but what ends up happening is, as you can see here, we're currently at 32 seconds. This is uh, like seven seconds um, of animation on, right? Because we want this middle portion to be longer. We don't want it to take seven seconds for that to come out. We want it to be whatever this, you know, initially was like a half a second or whatever to come out, but we want the middle portion to be longer. So what I typically tell people to do is uh, drag, if you want, to, and this is only for like use cases where it needs to be on screen for a really long period of time is figure out what your animation speed is on. Um, you might wanna drag this to make that animation speed longer, or you could bring it in if it's a DaVinci Resolve, uh, well, depending on who makes it, but my new 17 ones, you can actually go in. Uh, the 16 ones didn't have the ability to do that, but the 17 now do. Figure out what your animation on speed is and animation off speed is, and just be concerned with that. Then turn it into a compound clip. Once you do that, uh, bring this stuff up, add your uh, speed point on and speed point off, and then drag it out and make this longer, right? Because what you're doing is when you drag it out as a dynamic title, you're actually stretching out the timing for all of the keyframes, right? It doesn't know the you know, intro animation, the outro animation. It just says all the keyframes. It's just dynamically stretching them all together um, out. So if we're stretching 200%, all the keyframes get stretched 200%, right? This is definitely the go-to way to get things going without spending a lot of time and potentially messing up animations that uh, someone took some time to make. So I hopefully that helped you out. Whoops. Hopefully that helped you out and uh, will save you some time. Um, but that's kind of all I got for you on this topic. Hopefully you guys learned something, but with that being said, stay safe. My name's JR. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching.